no, no. No, listen. Oh, 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 I don't care. But listen to this, right? Yeah, all right, yeah, great, patronise me, right? But I'll tell you this. <laughs> Who's had the worst week this week, you or me, right? Let me tell you how bad my week was. I thought I got a real bargain, right? They've come up, they're a bit strapped for cash, so I bought it off them, right? I've given cash money, right, for the castle and all the paintings, right? <laughs> and then, oh, very mysteriously, the whole bloody thing burns down. <laughs> Oh, we don't smell insurance scam there, do we? <laughs> oh, it really wound me up. And then I got International Olympic Committee on me back. Want to have the Olympics in my back garden, right? Because it's massive. And I thought, do I really want it? And I said yes. And then I thought, no, because then they'll probably want me in it. <laughs> and then who have I got the most stump with? Morrissey, right? Because <laughs> no, he used to be my mate, right? But guess what he's done, right? When I knew him, well, what is, is this suspicious? His name was Morris. And everyone called me Millsy, right? <laughs> so now he has to be Morrissey, right? <laughs> and he used to do all these songs like Sha la 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 la, Sha la 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 lee, let's go picking flowers, baby you and me, and all this, right? <laughs> and I've said, here, I'm going to do now with all miserable songs on it, right? And suddenly he's had to copy it, right? And he's done this album, uh, what's on it? Oh, bloody hell, don't tell me I live in Manchester, right? <laughs> That's right, one. Oh, God, me jeans are dirty. Oh, Christ, it's raining, right? Holy... Oh, it wind me up. And this, this has wound me up as well. If I'd have known the troubles this is going to cause, I'd never written a book. <laughs> On it, if, if I'd have known the trouble it was going to cause, I'd never have shagged her in the first place. Oh. And pomade! Remember this? Pomade! Remember when you used to go to a party and you'd go up to a girl and go, Oh, I bought you some pain. <laughs> And she'd think it was champagne, right? And by the time she found out it was only really horrible, sickly, sparkling apple juice, she'd already slept with you, so it was too damn late. <laughs> <laughs> oh, remember when you used to do that? <laughs> like, Tuesday, remember? <laughs> what about this, anyway? Me being in again on a Friday night? Because normally, obviously, I'd be out, but I thought, you're coming round, I'll stay. But they'll all be standing round string fellas going, where is it? <laughs> Who's going to start the dancing? <laughs> oh, he's not stayed in Thaus again, has he? Because <laughs> normally I do knock about like normally I would be out and about. But like, I come down here a lot because I used to work down here. Me and my dad, we used to like decorating. We used to do decorating. We was working here a, a few months ago. And we done, uh, we done one of these buildings. We completely redone all the front of it. Uh, about six weeks ago, we finished the job. And uh, I think it looks all right. Looks okay, doesn't it? <laughs> Oh, 300 quid, you, you won't get better than that anyway. You won't get better than that. Any of you top firms, you won't get that kind of finish, right? A little bit of flaking, but you have to look, you have to expect that first thing. But that'll settle, that'll settle. And once that's settled, that bit up there is a bit, but I'll re flash that up. You just flash that, you just go, leave it to settle, and then I told him you just go around that bit. That, that looked lovely, that looked lovely, that. You don't get workmanship like that anymore, basically. <laughs> right, we have to get serious now. I'm sorry about that. I played you some, some, some stuff. Right? I've got some really sort of quite serious stuff here. And this is, uh, this is a show that was broadcast. It's a documentary, Fly on the Wall documentary. And what this is, this is the police, right, in Liverpool. And they've gone out with the Vice Squad. And they've, uh, they've taped some, some stuff, like action from the night in the red light districts. And they've taped this man who's picked up a prostitute and they've stopped his car. And there's the prostitute there, look. Doing a bit of a runner. <laughs> now, <laughs> I've actually put an idea in, right, that I want to base a game show around this. <laughs> Just a sort of light entertainment half-hour show called Blind Panic. Because <laughs> this man is now confronted by two very, very experienced police officers and is trying by hook or by crook to persuade them that no, I wasn't picking up prostitutes. <laughs> what were you doing with the young lady? Then? What were you doing with the young lady? Well, I saw her walking. I didn't realise where she was, to be honest. Or what she was. Oh, what she, she was. Not in. I thought, well, the night's wasted now. And I work either in <laughs> witness, and we come into here a lot. A um, lot? I work in Dombra and come in this way a lot. And I thought, well, I'll go and find my way around, because I don't know my way around properly. Yeah, this is his excuse, right, why he was in the area. Well, because I work in witness. 
a lot. And then he's thinking, I don't want to tell him where I work. No, I work in Bromborough. Actually, I work, oh, hundreds and hundreds of different places. And I don't know me way around. So I've just come for a bit of a drive, really. <laughs> hey, and top marks for the editor, thinking we don't want to embarrass him, right? We'll, black his, we'll mark his face out like that so he can't see him. Oh, yeah, like hundreds of people have got that sweater, <laughs> But he's talked himself into this terrible corner, right? And this policeman, right? This is what they teach them at Hendon Training College. This is how they teach them to react if, in their opinion, the suspect isn't being entirely truthful. <laughs> Imagine the shame of that. No, this is... <coughs> I'm not even going to bother hitting you with me truncheon, pal. <laughs> so what he's going to do now, right, is, is he's, he's got a bit of a plan now. They've got him. They've got him banged to right. So what he needs to do is throw them off scent, chuck them a little bit of a curveball, really. Uh, and he's going to work out a way that he can just sort of confuse them and just get himself a bit of a chance. Can I just say something before you yes. go any further? Yeah. You've got How's to he going to do it? spoken to the young lady. Pardon? I've just spoken to the young lady. Pardon? <laughs> By pretending not to hear the question. It's like, you've all done that, haven't you? Oi, what time do you get in last night? Pardon? <laughs> Excuse me, sir, I've reason to believe that you didn't pay for those bottles of wine. <laughs> Pardon? <laughs> it works, doesn't it? And he's trying it like the coffer's gonna... He's gonna go... Uh, the lady is a prostitute, and the cop is going to go, pardon, and the cop is going to go, oh, <laughs> what did I say? Would you like a lift home, sir? <laughs> it's just not going to work at all, and he's That's just blathering. Yes. She is a prostitute. Well, I didn't know. Well, that. I didn't know. She's, she's informing me of the fact that you picked her up as such. You knew she was a prostitute. No, I didn't. No, honestly. honestly. We're can't. all grown men, sir. Sorry. I love this bit here. <laughs> here, no, let's play that back. That's Sorry, waste a bit of time. Me. Listen. He said, we're all going many here. And he tries that trick again, like, oh, I don't know what you're saying. But then he realised, no, 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 that's a perfectly safe question. I won't incriminate myself by agreeing with that one. Grown men, sir. Sorry, we're all grown men here. Yes. Yeah. All right. Let's not try Yeah. No, you. no, all right, fine, I'm with you there. I'm with you. <laughs> we are as one, me and you now, comfortable. So anyway, this bloke's watched a lot of Kojak, Cagney and Lacey, that sort of thing. <laughs> and he knows about this. He knows about plea bargaining. <laughs> And he knows that although he's caught bang to rights, he can offer them something which will get him off, right? Because that's the way the legal system works. It's all you scratch your back, my back, I'll scratch yours. <laughs> Honestly, What's I'm he going to offer them? All I want to do is go home now. Oh, I'm sure you do now, yes. yes. I'm sure you do yeah, now. No, this is the last thing I wanted, to be honest. The last Please, thing I wanted. You know, I'm really upset. I'm, I'm really upset. upset. Straight home now, out of the way. He's offering them... I know I'm guilty, but if you don't arrest me, I'll go straight home. <laughs> no, I won't go with any other prostitute. <laughs> I'll not visit the brothel. If you just let me off, please, I'll go home. And I love this final shot here. No, you won't. <laughs> uh, so that's what's happened to him. He's gone out in his stupid crimpling trousers and his idiotic sweaters. <laughs> and he's got nicked, because he's a dirty beetle. <laughs> You were very late last night, Norman. What were you up to? Well, well, I was in uh, witness or Bromsborough because <laughs> I don't really know my way around uh, properly <laughs> oh I've seen this film what's on the other side oh look it's one of those fly on the wall police programs <laughs> oh look Norman it's, it's the road behind the market square uh -huh. <laughs> no, no. No, that's America. It's not America, Norman. It's the Market Square where you park when you go to the Legion. Uh, I don't know where I Legion to 
park. I don't know <laughs> where I where I where I park or what I park. To, to, to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, we don't want to watch this now. Turn it over now. Have a cup of tea. Would you like a happy face? Oh, look at her running away. Go on, you bloody little tramp. <laughs> Norman, he's, he's got the same sweater as you. No, I haven't got a sweater like that. <laughs> yes, you have. You're wearing it now. All I want to do now is just go to bed. <laughs> just go straight to bed. <laughs> sure you do now? No, really, I'm really upset now. I'll, I'll just go straight to bed. I'll just bugger off out your way straight to bed because this is the last thing I wanted uh, to watch. <laughs> no, Norman, we're all grown-ups here. Yes, yes. <laughs> he looks like you, sounds like you. It's your car and it's your sweater. Norman, it's you, isn't it? Pardon? <laughs> Did you ever do this? Did you ever ask the neighbour next door who just like plays music just that little bit too loud and really winds you up? I've got this lad who lives next door to me. It's the other thing he's done. He came round my house the other day, look left his poxy hat here. Like, I want to hear people think it's mine, right? But what I do to wind him up is I play music even louder. In fact, sometimes, when I can't get it loud enough on my stereo, I get the band in the front room to play it top whack to really wind it up. That's what I'm going to do now. Oi, Elton! Wake up, you old git! <laughs> Have a listen to some heat wave! These blokes here, I don't say anything. Uh, don't say anything at all, right? These three blokes, I know them, they live around my street, right? They're Russian like, secret service agents, don't say nothing. <laughs> say nothing, they're spies, they're famous. Listen. <laughs> yeah, look, look. See, look, this is... It's the house I was going to buy, right? I was going to buy all them houses there. Did you hear them? They're Russian, aren't they? <laughs> Secret service, but don't say anything because they got see them umbrellas that they haven't got. If they did have them, right, they'd have poison in the tip of it. Say nothing because they know me. So, uh, yeah, I was going to buy this house here and all these. I ain't really looking at these houses, right? I'm just, you have to be really careful with spies. You don't let them know you're looking at them. Ah, <laughs> oh, the daffodils are blooming in Prague. <laughs> there you go. That's the sign, that's the sign. See that? He done that look, right? That's a secret code word. Hey, all right. That's funny, that's the first one we've seen that I never used to go out with. <laughs> But listen, if it's nightmares you're after, this is your man. Oh, this is a proper film. This ain't like one of my proper videos. It's a proper film. Anyone seen uh, this film called Apocalypse Now? Uh, Francis Ford Coppola. And this is a film called Hearts of Darkness, which is about the making of Apocalypse Now. Just let me fill you in. Francis Ford Coppola put, I think, was it six million? Six million dollars is his own money into this film. All right, and he's going to make it. This is the opening, this is one of the opening scenes. It's inside this hotel room, and hey, who's he got? Top actor, Martin Sheen, gonna be playing. And funny enough, the day of this shoot is Martin Sheen's 36th birthday. And a few of the camera lads have thought, we'll get him a cake and three bottles of whiskey. <laughs> and Martin will drink them all, and then have to go on and do a bit of acting. <laughs> so, big scene, Martin's thought, I'm doing this in my underpants. No mucking about. Look at yourself in the... All right, punch the mirror then. He's cut all his hand up, look. Francis tried to stop it. And he called for a doctor. There was a nurse standing by. And I said, no. Let it, let it go. I want to have this out right here and now. It had to do with facing my worst enemy, myself. No. It had to do with having three and a half bottles of scotch before noon. <laughs> That's what it had to do with, Marty, my little darling. I was in a chaotic spiritual state. 
<laughs> chaotic spiritual state. <laughs> We've all been in them, haven't we? Excuse me, sir, do you mind explaining why you're doing wibbly-wobbly round the road bollards at 90 miles an hour? <laughs> Sorry. Bit of a confused spiritual state, me. <laughs> so what he said, basically, he said, Marty, look, you're pissed out of your face, right? <laughs> but you've been to acting school and they teach you this, rather, I tell your country, they teach you, if you're pissed, you can still cope. Just do some lucid dialogue, right, to explain what the scene's about, and for God's sake, stay on the bed. <laughs> <laughs> A miserable failure on both counts, Marty. <laughs> so this is Francis Ford Coppola's problem. Everyone on the show was drunk, right? Well, no, sorry, that's that's not true. Not everyone was drunk. Some people had problems in other areas. These glasses. These glasses. I can't see anything through them. But like, you know, every crack represents a life I've saved. <laughs> you know what I mean? When did you laugh like that? <laughs> What's that in your hand there, Dennis? Kensita? Silk cut? Something like that, is it? Dennis Hopper, who made, years later, made one of the great understatements. The life I've saved. I was not in the greatest of uh, shape. <laughs> not in the greatest of shape. You were out for lunch with the fairies, Dennis. <laughs> but Frankie's always been like that. I know Frankie. I gave him his first ever job in television, right? And he's always been like that. Always trying to make things intense and difficult. When never go for the simple way, will you? Thank you. Right. Right, I've had this brand new special banking new idea, right? This is what I want to do. Oh, have you not met? This is Frankie Ford Coppola, Annabella, Annabella, Frankie Ford Coppola. Hi. Nice to see you, Frankie. Lost a bit of weight. Super. Lovely. <laughs> right. <laughs> now, this is my idea. Imagine this, right? Imagine this, right? Shaggy, Scooby and the gang, right? They're driving along, but hey, hey, they're in a minibus. Right. What about that? Work with it. I've thrown it out, you catch it, run. <laughs> so the whole thing is like a, a voyage into their souls. They are continually travelling on and on, mm? incessantly moving forward. Well, yes and no, I'm with you, but what about this? What about if they run out of petrol and break down? <laughs> Outside, a bloody great big old house. What about that? Haunted. Okay, well, let me see, let me see. Uh, uh, haunted by the uh, spirit of man's fears, uh, haunted by its hunger, haunted by the fury within itself. Or, or... <laughs> by an old caretaker. An <laughs> old caretaker? An old caretaker, but what? no, listen, listen, listen. I know he's... No, listen. Come on, there's your shot. Big stairway. Shaggy and Scooby. Oh, do be do Oh, be do No, no, this is uh, ridiculous. Here, here. Tell us your ending. Because I know you've got a bit of an ending. So please, do it. Here. Do it. Perform. No, perform oh, yeah. Your own time, Frankie. Okay, all right. Are you yeah. ready? Okay, okay. Are you centred? Yeah. Uh, yeah, I am now. Yeah, right. okay. Uh, how's this? Look at this. This is crap. Shaggy is in a hotel room mm -hmm. in his pants. Yeah? Uh, he leans back against the bed uh, and then slips down to the floor. Exhausted. Whoa! Oh. I love it. I love it. I love it. I oh oh oh. I think we can say goodbye, banana splits. I really do. I think it's an absolute bloody cracker. I want to wrap it up. Take it home to me mother. Okay. Frankie, you show sure? me. Go and write it now. You sure. Go and write that script <laughs> now. Off you go. You okay, Bob? Oh, it's crack. Here. Yeah. Ciao. 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 Okay. Absolutely. <laughs> hey, I don't want it all. I want... Okay, Bobby. Okay, Bobby. Oh, okay, Bobby. Absolutely <laughs> bloody phenomenal. <laughs> Ghostbusters. Ballet. <laughs> <laughs> so, Mania, just write down. 
caretaker takes off the mask and says, I'd have gotten away with it if it wasn't for you pesky kids. It's crap, but it'll do, all right? I'll sort it out with Frankie. Don't worry about him. He gets in a bit of a chaotic spiritual state by lunchtime. Frankie, for Christ's sake, put your trousers on. She's a traffic warden. <laughs> Listen, look at this. Hey, I'll, yeah. Nothing, nothing. Car care, that's all it is. Just a bit of a video about car care. Because, I mean, I've got 125 cars and, I, and I've got people who look after them for me, but I thought, hey, it'd be handy to know myself. You never know. So what I did is I went out and bought it. Now, picture this. You're working in the office and you make these videos. And they said, right, come on now, please, just before lunch, we've got to get this car care video sorted out. Somebody? We need a presenter. Jonathan Ross? Mm, I don't know. <laughs> Nelson Pika? Hey, Nigel Mansell? Jackie Stewart? Someone like that? Oh, well, all right. Well, we'll, we'll go for that. But come on, let's hurry it up. We want to get over to the pub. For me, and I expect. <laughs> Tell you somebody, explain the link. <laughs> Car care with Anita Harris. You ever broken down on the M1 and thought, Jesus, where's Donna? <laughs> it doesn't happen. It's ridiculous. It just strips it of all. They might as well have had Colin Beckhurst, right? Who you don't know. He's just a bloke who works in my garage, right? He's a bit dozy, really. But they might as well have had him. But I mean, let's have a look at it anyway way to get around. Colin Beckhurst has been a garage service manager for 10 I can't believe it. You've got Colin in the... I'll tell you what, Colin's a lovely lad, he'd give you a last pound, but he's a sandwich short of a picnic. <laughs> I'll tell you, he's the kind of bloke, you said, oh, my car's broken down, the engine's broken, what do I need? He'd probably say something like, a basic toolkit. <laughs> oh, let's yes. have a, I've got to he's see. He's a good looking boy, though. things you can do so that you can maintain your car. So, Colin, I know I should carry a spare tire, but what else would you send to me? A basic toolkit. <laughs> you have to say it. Hey, but come on, he knows his way around a toolbox. Anything, anything you've got, he'll tell you what it does. Consisting of adjustable spanner. What's an adjustable spanner do then, Cole? Which you can adjust to fit any size. It adjusts. <laughs> What's an adjustable spanner do? It adjusts. <laughs> He's a genius. He's second to none in the car care business, old Colin Beckers. I'll tell you, I want on some more music. Here, listen, you know we wound Elton up, right? This other bloke, he's lived here about five or six months. He's never once popped round and said hello. You know, you go around his house, take my cup and say, oh, no, he's never there. Oh, he doesn't want you coming in. I don't like him at all.